Hey guys, let me know what you think by liking and commenting, and it really helps me and this channel out when you subscribe, so please click that button. Thanks a bunch! Okay, well, we've got Susie's sheep here, and you know what that means. It means it is time to just <laughs> go through some locomotives that I have, and I'm just going to share them with you. Maybe, maybe you had one of these. Maybe, you know, this brings up some good nostalgia for you. Maybe it's something you want. So if it is something you want, you can take a look at it now. And uh, if I find any that I can fix really quickly, I'll try to do that. If not, maybe we'll get lucky and they'll all work. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Okay, anyway, today I'm going to start off with this. I think it's a Tyco USA Express. Yeah, so this is going to be a Century 430. Is that what this is? Century 430 is Alco, right? Century 430, I think so. So let's take a look. It looks like it's been run, but it's not the worst thing in the world, right? So me in Hong Kong, it's got the power torque kind of terrible motor, but you never know, maybe we'll get lucky and this will work. It looks like it's in pretty nice shoe. It's definitely, it's faux rear lights. That's okay. I guess it'd be something easy to kind of haul out if that's what you wanted to do. No couplers are on it, but still looks like it's had some love, had some use. I don't know if this is grime on the front of it or if this is... That's something that's lasting. I'm not sure and I don't want to mess with it right now while I'm on camera. It's pretty neat. I've I don't think I've seen this exact model in person, at least not that I remember. I'm sure I have, maybe. It doesn't have reelings, but that's sort of typical for Tyco. I don't know if this was supposed to have them or did have them. Let me get the power up and the chances of this working straight out of the box. Or Actually, there's no box. I just have it. I think I picked it up from some guy who's kind of getting out of the hobby because he was moving. Let's see. Oh. Well, it's got some stiction, but it... Oh, I can't smell it. I wish I had smell vision but there's a lot of ozone. So it's been sitting a while, but it's running. It's running better than a lot of power torque. Will. If I just ran it for a while, it'd probably be fine. I guess. Let's see here. Well, that's a little bit tight, but I bet if we cleaned out some of off some of this I might be a little bit better off and again it's much harder to do this through a camera than you might think as I practice it hopefully I'll get better so I don't know I'll have to I'll have to kind of specifically clean these later I don't want to Spend a ton of time doing that here. I'm gonna actually get some wheel cleaner up here, which I don't have. I'm just sort of sure feel the resistance, that's for sure. Well, I think. this is working even though it's gonna need some love from me to get it working better you know what it's not been at all it's got some stiction oh, I may have to pull the motor out of there and just gosh even just running it in for a little while may help Probably going 
I have to end up taking this apart, so... Ooh, I mean, these gears are a little... They're a little gunked up. Some electrical contact cleaning in the yeah even this minor run-in seems to be helping it so well maybe what I'll do is I'll put on rollers put on rollers and let it run for a while and even just with that it's running better yeah not bad at all so there we go I don't know you know, there's a lot of Tyco guys out there. I do have some converted Tyco stuff, and I'll show it off later. But I just haven't seen this too much. I'm not even sure. I'll have to go and look up what... I assume this came in some sort of a set. I mean, that, that ozone smell is pretty strong. Um, but hey, it looks pretty nice. It's pretty cool. Looks like there's a lot of hope here. Oh, well, we'll see how that goes. I always like this Century Series locomotives. I think they look, I don't know. I mean, they, they look both elegant and generic at the same time, I guess. I mean, there's no part of it that's just super overwhelming and doesn't look right. Um, but it definitely pretty utilitarian look. But in this package, I, I think it looks pretty neat. So there you have it. Does anyone have one of these or anyone run one as a kid or anyone remember getting one for Christmas or something like that? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. All right, on to the next one. Next locomotive I'm going to show you is part of this Toy Story Express train set. It's pretty nifty. Um, I have really good memories of the movie. And um, of course, it is the first. I really don't know how many are in this series, but I guess this came out in 1996. It seems like maybe the mid to very kind of like 1998 region was the last great hurrah for train sets being associated with any kind of films or anything like that. So here is this one. Picked it up pretty inexpensively, and it's in pretty nice shape. I should say the train itself seems to be in really nice shape. In fact, it may not have been run at all or had been run very, very little. But if you look, all the track seems to be in place, although it's not tied together. So I guess it was used. But if that's the case, it really wasn't used very much at all, I don't think. Because um, I've inspected some of these, and they're in excellent shape. So we can kind of go around the horn here. Got Buzz Lightyear looking all manly, doing his buzzy thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's really neat. And uh, go to the next one here. This is the Green Army Men. It's kind of interesting just to call it Green Army Men. But they're using desert parachutes. Fair enough. Not the commanding officer. I don't know what the protocol is for that kind of thing. Next one is Woody's own hopper. Looks like he's having a good time hanging out in Arizona maybe parts of California and New Mexico. This next one I didn't really catch on super quick. Took me a couple seconds to think about it. But Slinky Dog and a hot dog looking tank car. And I didn't realize he, you know, the spring goes all the way through the tank car. Pretty nifty actually. So he's looking happy doing his slinky thing. And after that, we have Bo Peep here. Of course, it's Woody's love interest. And um, it's, what is his name? I, gosh, can't remember his name now. It's going to bother me all day. And here is the locomotive. So set looks pretty intact, um, but this isn't all of it, actually. There is a little bit more. And there is this tri-pack, which, um, yeah, it's got some more. It also looks to be, I mean, the box isn't in great, great shape, but it looks like the cars are in excellent shape. They're all hoppers. So I think this could be a pretty nice looking train. Of course, if you, you know, you <laughs> rivet counter or you're into prototypicality, there's nothing that looked like this in real life, obviously. But if you're like me and I'm overgrown rack and I'm attracted to colors, then this kind of thing will work really well, I think. So there you have it. Let's go grab the locomotive and I will see if it works. Okay, so here it is. Get a little bit better look at it. It's gonna be uh, made in Slovenia by Mahano. So it's, it's like it's got AHM markings on it too. I have several of these. Was this SD40-2, I think, with these overhangs? Let's see if it runs. It's just, hmm, I don't think it's ever been run. No, I don't think 
think this has ever had anything done with it. Look at that. It is sure nice. Very nice. Well, it's a, it's a light light up. Yeah, it does. It's kind of hard to see here because it's so bright, but yeah, looks great. I don't know if there's supposed to be a chain in there. If there is, it's broken. I don't know. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like there's any flashing, so I don't think there's supposed to be a chain in there. Take a closer look at it. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty neat. It's from pretty much the SD40-2 is my favorite diesel, particularly American diesel. Yeah, it's nice, it's got everything. And yeah, it's never been run and it runs good. So the railings are kind of thick, but they feel pretty tough, which is good, especially I guess if you wanted kids running this. So man, I think that's uh, it's gonna make a nice addition. Very nice. Very, very nice. Okay, well, it's not, <laughs> nothing went wrong with it, so there's not a whole lot to talk about other than how nifty that looks. I'm not going to have to pull it apart. I will eventually have to put a decoder in it, but that's yeah, pretty nice. Actually, the detail isn't even too bad for what it's worth. Especially from three foot, it'll look cool. All right, there you have that. All right, so what's up next? Oops, is this Walther's, is it a Walther's Proto or is it a Lifelike Proto? Maybe a Lifelike Proto, actually. This uh, FB2 in Great Northern. Sorry about that, with dynamic brakes. Not that I'm ever too worried about that kind of thing. I bought this because my Great Northern Empire Breaker Consist is incredibly long. It's almost half a mile scale long, and I shouldn't have done it. I just got a little bit overzealous when I saw these cars. I like them so much, I just started buying them. But then I didn't realize how long my Consist was getting. So whoops on that one. Not my bad, but right now I have three locomotives pulling it, and it pulls it okay, but... I think it looks a bit wrong having so few locomotives pulling it, so uh, maybe at the end of this video I will run it with this. And you know what, maybe I'll just do a video where I convert this to DCC. That's what I'll do. Alright, here it is. Has this thing ever been used? Right, let me get these out of the right way so the package police don't get me. Gotta always be cautious of the package police because they come after you in the comments if you don't open the package exactly the way you want, they want you to, so. Got to get this time in here sharp enough. Get this tape off. I don't, I don't think, I think this is new. This is a new old stock locomotive. All right, package police, make sure you do this right to your standards. I find most of these, you gotta get up under here and push this out. See, I use the slot, package police, don't get on me. All right, this one has two holes in it also. Push up on that. Okay, let's see what kind of bits I get out of this. Oops. Alright, so let's 
coupling elements. It looks like a few other things. Maybe I'll put these on. We'll see. I'm gonna get rid of this packaging real quick. Ooh, there's packaging everywhere. Okay. Wait, hmm, it's not supposed to be screwed down. I guess it just sits in there. It's held on by friction. Oh, uh, no, this looks like it does have some use. Hmm, I don't know. Or is that just, is that just from turning these? I'm not sure if that's use or not. Okay, let's see. See if this works real quick. You can hear all this kerfuffle in the background. Okay, it sounds a little bit seized. Let's see if we can just turn it by hand real quick. Almost. So I if oh man. Commutator looks really clean. Hmm, if this did get any use, it didn't get much. It has a plug for DCC, but we're not going to use that because this will be perfect for a soundtrack's economy. Okay, let's try it again. Oh, there it goes. Because I have a cracked gear because I'm derailed. Sounds like sounds like a man of cracked gear. Sounds like it. Hmm. Yeah. It's cracked gear for sure. So I will replace that. It's got to find my gears. And I will replace it. Yeah, that. So that's really typical for these pros is having cracked gear. That's yeah, cracked gear. Yeah, it kind of. All right. So that's no problem. I got one of these lying around. It's lifelike. So if it's gotten very little or no use than 1998. Ooh, this thing's old. I'm old, but let's see what it looks like. But it's handsome. It's a handsome guy. I'm sure the shell fits. Yeah, no problem. And with that weight in there, I don't have enough weight to help pull my... It's not quite on there. It's actually harder to do this than you think, looking through a camera. What is it? What does it want from me? What do you want from me? So, oh, it looks like it is supposed to be screwed in. Okay, so that's no problem. We can do that, and I assume that'll hold this weight down. And I will... Give me a second and I'll go see if I can find the gears. Change these gears out. Let's take a look well. So let's take a look at it real quick. It's nice. It looks like my other ones, although I I, I think I have the one that I have that's also an FB is a Walther's train lion. So maybe they use this tooling, maybe they didn't. I don't know. In fact, when I go downstairs to get those gears. I will bring that one up and you can take a look at these at the same time to see how they compare. And I'm almost 100% sure the other one I have is a Walther's train line. <laughs> Who knows, it may be the same, maybe the same number. I'm not sure. So we'll handle that and I'll go get the gears. So hang on. Okay, so next up is uh, another one I have. It's a uh, NFL Super Bowl Express. 
made by Mantua, I think. It sure feels like a Mantua. Let's see what we've got here. Yeah, look at that. Mantua made in China. Oh, actually, it's part of the first edition. It's certified by the NFL. Well, that's good. I guess they would have taken a look at these and first edition in 1991. So goodness gracious, that's uh, it's not super duper old, I guess, in terms of Mantuas. There's so many of them around. Looks like the wheels have a fair amount of use, but not horrific. All right, so this truck is powered and so is this one. Are there any traction tires? It probably wouldn't have to be, it's pretty hefty. Is this the AMD GP5, uh, GP20? Is that what this is, right? A GP20? It's, it's back, oh, just literally because they couldn't get the mold to work properly unless that was a separate piece, I guess. Eh, it's pretty neat. Doesn't have a road number, or if there was a road number, it's it was a sticker maybe and came off. I really don't know, but it's pretty nice. These railings are really solid. They're plastic. They're thick. So I'm thinking there was never a chain in between those. Let's see if I can... I don't see any after flashing, so probably they don't have chains. Well, let's see what happens. This on the track. Oh. oh. Well. Goes. So and a little bit of stiction, probably some issues with the electrical pickups. Oh, and by the way, sorry about that. The reason you're not seeing me change the gear out on the Proto um, FM2 is I decided to go ahead and just do a video on it. I realized maybe people would benefit from that. Is that a traction tire? No, nope, that's just the way that looks. Yeah, so I realized that maybe some a lot of people are going to have issues with changing the, the gear out on the proto unit so i'm just going to do a separate video i'm also going to go ahead and put dcc in it at that time so sorry i know i said that i'll do it for you here and i, I didn't mean to lie i just changed my mind and since these are unedited that's how it's going to go sometimes so i hope you'll forgive me and if it's something you're interested in seeing i can have that video up pretty soon because i want to change that gear out because I want to get that running in my Great Northern Empire Builder Consist, which is the longest and heaviest that I have. It's very long. It's almost a half mile, half scale mile long. Gunk's coming off of there pretty, pretty well, so. Yeah, I think. It's already running a lot better just by cleaning up those wheels. Let's see if I can stop it in another place. Yeah, I think just clean off these wheels will get us a lot closer to having it. And it runs nice. You know, Mantua's, it's kind of got a little bit of Mantua ground, but frankly, it's even a little better than average, I think, in that regard. Oh my goodness, it's hard to do this with the camera. Yeah, whatever that gunk is, looks like it's just standard track. It's just gunk. It looks like it's an oil that was on the track and just built up standard track gunk. It's coming off really easy. So I'm really happy about that. If I had this set up a little bit better, I could just run it and just let it spin against the brush, but I don't. Now, you know what? It's running a lot better as soon as I just clean that stuff off. Yeah, and I think you know when it's kind of hesitating, it's probably hitting some of those bad. Just, yeah. Does it oh, goodness, it's running great. Seems like it'll be a pretty decent 
easy DCC conversion. I don't think it's going to give me any grief if that's what I choose to do with it. I have the caboose. Sorry, I didn't bring it up here, but what I'll do is after I convert this, assuming that's what I decide to eventually do with it, I can show off the whole consist. And it looks like if you want one of these, they're not too expensive. Of course, they don't have... This is 1991, so they're not going to have boxcars and whatnot for the very latest teams, the ones that came after 1991. So, um, you know, I don't know where's Carolina and Jacksonville. Were they part of all this at this time? I don't know. So as soon as we used to have season tickets to the Denver Broncos when I lived there, but after I left Denver... I pretty much just switched to college football only. Because we moved to a city without an NFL football team and I just didn't feel connected anymore. Oh yeah. So let's see, it kind of stopped there. Oops. So it seems like 60% of the issue here is just cleaning off these wheels. And as I do that, it seems to be performing better and better. This is probably as much as I'm going to do with this. I'm going to take up your entire day with this one locomotive, but I'm just kind of excited. Okay. talking to you about this. Okay, well, again, I don't want to take up your whole day with this, but here it is, the NFL Super Bowl Express made by Mantua, and it's nice that they marked it with which edition, 1991, so I know exactly when it was released, or at least have a good idea. What is that down there? Oh, it's a trademark. All right, so there you have it. Is anyone, anyone run any of these? It's actually a pretty handsome locomotive. The colors are not too bad. It certainly would be eye-catching if you're running this on your layout with all the um, accompanying cars. So there you have that. Let's go to the next one. I realize this, most of these have worked thus far, so I don't know if we got one more chance here. And this is this, oh yeah, this is the CB&Q. What is this? And I have the box. So, um, you know, it's made by River Ross, I'm sure, but I guess this is the box for it. And the box, it's, I don't know. I didn't, I'm sorry, Susie. Sorry. Sorry about that. Okay. I guess, well, there's a lot of stuff that was in here. It's one of those things that looks like it's been in storage for a while. Let's see the end of it. 505. So this is actually not the correct box for this, I think. It says 5056 in the number, the road number is 550, so, hmm, I don't know, and to be honest, I don't know much about these General Electrics, so which one this is, it's definitely a General Electric, right, but it, uh, isn't it more like a U30, something like that? Someone can tell me down, I'm, I'm not so good at telling these apart, I, some just look longer than the others, but I'm not good enough at seeing by eye which one's which. Let's see, so looks like I got a different box. Well, you know what? Let me see what the what's in the box first. I don't know what that is. What is this? Are these just dealers? Oh, well, this is authorized service station. So how many of you remember any of these? Excelsior Station, is that stationary and hobby? <laughs> That's an interesting stationary and hobby store. Whistle Stomp. Let's see if there's any I remember from growing up. Indianapolis. Wait, I gotta find where's Colorado. Here, Colorado. Colorado. The train Shop. I don't remember them. Bad Bond Hobby. I don't remember them specifically. Um, that's it. 
There's just two in the Denver area, then one in Colorado Springs? No, certainly not. So I grew up near Caboose Hobbies. I went there a lot. Um, but I don't see them on this. I guess they weren't an authorized center. J and H, the train shop. Well, the one I remember the most is Caboose Hobbies and a interesting story is Gary Coleman, and those of you who are older will remember him from different strokes. Gary Coleman actually worked at Caboose Hobbies, and um, I was actually shopping with my whole family. My mother went once in a while with my father and I, and Gary Coleman was actually working at Caboose Hobbies. And I, my mother, I didn't, but my mother asked him for his autograph, and he's like, I can't do that. I'm sorry. I, I can only really help you with the trains. She's like, oh, that's all right. I understand. My mom was always, always wanted people's autographs, <laughs> uh, but he was really nice about it. Really nice guy. So there's just my Gary Coleman slash train story. So I don't know if any of you have any, but yes, he worked at Caboose Hobbies for a little while in Denver. All right, so I don't, um, interesting. So I don't know if this was actually technically part of what came in that box, but it's just, I guess a really basic instruction sheet on how to do HO scale modeling. And then there's, this. Once again, it's instru well, that's my, it's the same exact one on there. So maybe, hmm, I don't know why the box, maybe the, so the box is just the wrong box, but it is a U25C, so that's good to know. Good, 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 good. Okay, so what's the features? All right. Hmm, 70 miles per hour is how fast this thing could go real life restricted anyway. I guess it's actual top speed was higher. All right. So there you have it. Normally I don't have manuals or at least ones I'm interested in necessarily showing, but this time helps solve a little bit of a mystery. Okay, so here it is. We have confirmed as U25C and it is in the Chinese red, or I guess some people call this a red bird livery. It has some grime on it. I don't, hmm, I don't know if this is oxidation or what probably happened is there was something, I don't know, it could even be smoke from like steam engines that kind of accumulated on here and then now it's made things a little discolored. And I don't know if, if that's something that can come off. It's definitely on there, but I'm not sure if it's over. So oh, it's, it's coming off. So, hmm. so I have a really light brush that will, I don't want to use anything abrasive on this at all. Uh, no, so I don't have a brush that's sort of light enough, that'll help me. No, definitely not that. That'll help me take off anything. So we're not gonna do that, but it's definitely something that would come off if I put some time into it. So it's nice. I like these Riverossis. Um, you know, definitely the, I think the stanchions are a little bit thick, but I guess no thicker than Amazon, or um, excuse me, Amazon. Um, Ather Blue Box. Looks to be intact. As the chain horn hook coupler. Well, let's see. This will be our last chance to have one that doesn't work. And these wheels I didn't really look at. They're they're fair. Traction tires will need to be replaced. Looks like. Ooh, what's going on? So that's interesting. Um, and I've seen these before. But there's the drive shaft. The drive shaft's actually actually coming out of the fuel tank and it doesn't go into a tower like you normally see so if you haven't seen one of these there's the drive shaft going out of the fuel tank and it doesn't go into like a tower that's higher up so the thing about these i've noticed is they're kind of noisy so let's see if that's the case here okay if it assuming it even runs hmm. Or where it looks to run out of goes. So, it looks like 
looks like it needs a little TLC, but so it's just some stiction. Not surprising there. And it is a little noisy. But it's not hideous, right? It's certainly heard worse. So just a little stiction. Other than that, it seems to run great. Well, okay, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna get you one today that um, doesn't work. I mean it. Here's that ozone smell, so this has been sitting for quite a while. Neat. Ooh, it is pretty strong coming out of this one. So a lot of these have been sitting for a while. Not having anything done with them, but let's see if the headlight works. I can really check. Not that I'm too worried about that, but... It does work. You can't see it, sorry about that, but you know, trust me, it does work. It's not a bad little unit, and given what I paid for it, I think it is a good candidate for a DCC conversion. If not, I'll figure out something else to do with it, but that's that's pretty nice. You know what? While I've been talking to you about this, I just, for some reason, I'm fascinated with this. Um, now I sort of talk, talked about my Gary Coleman story. Um, just curious if any of you, I'll try to run through this real quick. And if any of you guys who are my age or older, and you don't want to say how old you are, I'm ancient, I guess. You can tell me if you remember any of these. So there's Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Pee Wee stores. Interesting, I wonder if anybody, if anyone remembers any of these. Love to hear about that. Sastrator train repair. You know, there was one place in Alabama that I remember. Oh, there's just nowhere in Alabama. Um, I actually have an old model from somewhere in Alabama, and it's now what would be just down the street from the University of Alabama, Birmingham. It's not there anymore, but um, I, when I run across these, I'm always curious. You know, this is an interesting um, business to be in, right? Um, these these stories, uh, sort of these stores may not last very long. I'm trying to concentrate on some of these. Sorry about that. Um, you know, we certainly we know the demise of the local hobby shop, or at least demise of model railroad stores. They may have switched to RC or something that's a little bit more popular. But of course, I'm a historian. I'm a retired historian. So anytime I try to get a piece of ephemera, sorry, I don't want to turn away from that. If you remember any of these, um, it just something I'm curious about. Looks like there's a fair number of places in New Jersey. One in Trenton, Central Jersey Coin and Supply. Just not mention of train anything. Albany, Caboose Train Center in Huntington, New York. Hi-Fi Audio Lab, I guess Hi-Fi Audio Lab in Oneida, New York. Um, let's see, Lee's, Hi-Fi Lee's, a couple of Lee's. So in some states like Alabama, you know, maybe in Mississippi, I didn't see any. They're kind of out of luck, I guess. You're going to have to mail this thing off. Here's Ohio, Youngstown, Cleveland, Columbiana. I don't even know where that is. Dayton Model Railway. So I have an interesting story about Dayton area, which I'll talk about uh, in another video here. Lance's Camera Shop in Pennsylvania. Anyone remember any of these? Sorry, I know I'm filming this in 4K, so hopefully you'll be able to kind of stop and actually see these. Can't stand, I want to sit here forever and take up all this time, but Key V Hobby and Crafts, a lot of them in Pennsylvania, Miller's Hobby Shop, Rhode Island, Bellevue Cameron Hobby Shop, South Dakota, the Inland Empire System, in Sioux Falls. A fair number in Texas, that's good. A hobby House, Big Ed Speed Shop. Uh, there's one in Washington. 
no, two. It was one in Everett and one in Seattle. But basically, if you're not in the Everett metropolitan area at this time, you have nowhere to go. Wisconsin, fair number there. And there's the lone one, Georgia's Trains in Toronto, Ontario. Okay. Well, they even printed this in Italy. So I don't know if any of this gives a clue to when this was actually printed, but um, there's 1165, so it may be November 1965. Maybe. But I don't, you know, if that goes with the box, the box doesn't look like it went with this particular locomotive. So there you have it. I really enjoy this stuff, and um, hopefully you do too. Okay, that's all I've got for you today. Hope you enjoy this. I, I don't know, actually, this is becoming one of my favorite things where I can just talk to you. It's You're not here, but it's like talking to friends about these trains because I don't get out a whole lot because of my schedule and everything, but um, I'm happy to talk to somebody because I know you're responding to me and I really appreciate that. All right, well, as usual, you know, stay safe, take care out there, and happy model railroading. And uh, me and Susie will get with you next time. Take it easy.